So in my last video, uh, we just got to the stage where I was drawing out a simple sort of uh, shape that's going to be my mould for casting. So I'm going to uh, now put my template, if you like, onto my piece of MDF, and my MDF is going to then be cut out to the shape, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is going to cut the shape out. Now, I could use a pair of scissors if I want to cut this out, but personally, because there's a lot of straight lines here, and I, I think it's a little bit more accurate, I'm going to use a craft knife and a steel rule, okay? You could also use a safety rule if you're concerned about uh, safety, okay? So when I'm using a craft knife, what I always do is place the craft knife blade on the point, and bring the ruler up to the craft knife like this and then align the ruler, okay, so I know that I'm on the line, okay. I'm then going to hold the craft knife with my finger on the top like this and at a low angle and holding it about 90 degrees off the table and I'm just going to very lightly press and do this a series of times, okay. If you've got a nice sharp blade it should only really do it in one but there you can see I'll get a clean cut. What I don't want to be doing, as I said, if I hold this at a high angle or an angle like this and I pull, what you'll see is we'll be ripping the material. So it's always important to keep it low and at 90 degrees to the, paint, the paper or the surface. So I'm just going to go around and cut out the rest of my design like this. So there we go. And on the other two sides, one here and the top. Okay. Now, a lot of students, what they'll do is they'll cut out this section in the middle as well, okay? But there's no real reason to do this because ultimately if I cut this section out, it's likely that it'll be harder to see what I'm actually cutting. What I want to see is nice bold lines like that so it's easier for me to cut and work with accuracy. Now another thing you can do to make sure that you don't cut in the wrong areas is I like to kind of put some cross hatching or just hatching in one direction like this going across the design so I know what my waste material is, okay? So it's important to mark out the waste because then you know exactly what you can and can't cut out on the design. So I know that area in the centre is my waste material. Okay. What I'm now going to do is stick this onto my wooden uh, mould part. Okay. And I'm just going to use uh, some Pritt stick or glue stick uh, to do this. Okay. So when using a glue stick, again, some people tend to bring loads of glue out like this and use lots of glue, thinking it will glue better. But ultimately, as a rule of thumb, with most glues. Okay, the less glue you use, the better. So I've just got the, the last little bit of the glue out like this, and I'm making sure I'm covering the whole surface very carefully like this. Okay, so you can see there's a very thin layer of glue there. Okay, if you do find you get any large blobs of glue, what I like to do is just take the glue right back and then use this as a kind of a scraper, I suppose, to push out any uh, excess glue and make sure it's very thin. I'm then going to lay this carefully from one end at the top there and just lightly press down making sure there's no air bubbles or anything on the wood and that it's reaching the right areas. You can see I've got a few air bubbles at the bottom there, I'm just pushing those out with my uh, thumb like that and that's quite a, good, um, quite a good adhesion that we've got there. As you can see it's not moving around and it's glued quite quickly because I've not got that excess glue. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to cut this out. Now I'm going to be using just a coping saw like this. When you do choose your coping saw, you pick up your coping saw at the first, make sure you check your blade and there's no teeth missing. And I like to make sure the teeth are facing down. There are a few people who like to cut on the forward stroke, but I always think you've got more control cutting on the downward stroke. The other thing that I want to do is make sure that these two pins are aligned. So I'm making sure that they're both parallel to each other to make sure that it's not cutting at an angle. Okay. I'm just now going to secure this into the vise. So it's just the area that I want to start cutting and start cutting this out. Now, what I like to do is just mark my thumb as to where I'm going to cut. Just put the, the teeth of the blade up against my thumbnail like this and just draw it back lightly. Now, you'll notice I'm being mindful that I'm trying to keep this at a 90 degree angle to the edge like this. So I know when I cut out, my front and back will not be cut at angles, making this uh, a, an asymmetrical product. Okay? So I'm going to cut like this. I've done my little notch there so it doesn't slide around and then just start cutting my design out as we go. Now, you will notice I'm cutting right into the design like this and a lot of students look at this and they think, oh that's, that's terrible, you've, you've ruined your design. I haven't. I can cut anything inside here because this is a waste material. Okay? And in fact, if I cut like this, I'm just going to do the second cut from this side like this. If I cut like this and follow my lines like this, I can take a piece out. Now what this allows me to do now is I can now position my saw to cut on the different angles without trying to do the whole design in one bit, which some students can find very difficult. Okay. Now the other thing I find 
is rather than moving my hand round or moving the blade round, it's often easier to move the design round to do my next cut. As you can see, I've got this nice big space, so I can now bring my design in and start cutting my next design. I'm looking very closely at my design for quality assurance, making sure it stays at 90 degrees. And you'll notice when I removed the saw there, I kept the saw moving in the same direction as I was taking it back. Okay. Now again, I've cut down to that point. It's going to be very hard to advance my saw and get around that corner. So rather than making it hard for myself, I'm going to start over here and then start cutting in and angling my saw as I cut to get into that corner just down there. And again, I can take another piece out. Now what I can keep doing now is moving around my design part by part and taking this out each section at a time. Always moving my design, not moving my hand and trying to maintain that downward cut position. Okay, I'm going to cut the rest of this out and then we'll move on to the next stage in a second.